as we start taking derivatives and not using the definition of a derivative to do it, it's going to become important for us to know certain things. Uh, how derivatives operate, especially when we combine two functions together. So we're going to take a quick look at some properties of differentiation, and then we'll just look at some examples. And included in those, we're going to talk about how to use the proper derivative notation. So let's start by looking at different ways that derivatives can be represented. For example, I could have a, uh, a function f defined as, say, the sum of two other functions, g of x and h of x. The question is, well, what about f prime of x? When I find that, is, is that some strange combination of these two things? How does that work? Well, fortunately for us, the derivative of a sum of two functions, in this case g and h, is simply the sum of their two derivatives, g prime and h prime. That's a good thing for us to know. Another good thing for us to know is going to be, what about if f of x is some constant, say k, times another function? What's going to happen in that case? Well, f prime of x, conveniently enough, is going to be this, that same constant k, times the derivative of whatever g is. So I can sort of think of holding the constant out by itself, differentiating the other function, and then just simply multiplying the result by the constant. And this is going to help us in a couple of different ways. For example, in, in the case over here of f of x being the sum of two functions, the two functions might have very different derivatives. I could have something like x squared plus cosine x. I could then just take the derivative of x squared, take the derivative of cosine, and simply add those two derivatives together. They're found in different ways through different shortcuts, but that will work for us. In this case, I could have, say, f of x equals 1982 x to the seventh, and I could think about just simply holding off the 1982 as a constant times whatever I get when I take the derivative of, of the much simpler x to the seventh power. The last one is what happens when you start out with a constant function. So say f of x equals 10. What is f prime of x? Well, we're going to look at this one graphically because we're going to think about the fact that if f of x equals 10, visually, that would simply be a line that's horizontal that passes through uh, any point that has a y uh, of 0. So for example, 3, 10 would be on the line. If you think about this as the slope of the tangent line at any point along this graph, which by the way would be the same everywhere, every tangent line that we draw in this case would look just like f itself and all of them would have the same exact slope, and that would slope would be 0. So their rate uh, of change of a constant function is 0 because it doesn't change. Let's look at a few examples. These come right from your exercise set on page 90. And we're going to do just a few of the odd, ex or I'm sorry, the even exercises so you have some examples you can use that aren't in the solutions. The first one I want to look at is actually number 2. Number two simply says, if you have y equals 11 x to the eighth power, we would like to find the derivative. So find the equation of the derivative function. First of all, let's talk notation. Since the equation is given as y equals, the best way for us to write the derivative is using y prime notation. Second of all, this is obviously the derivative of a constant times a function. So we're simply going to rewrite the 11 times. Now we're taking the derivative of a power function, which we know we can do, by taking the exponent 8 and writing it as a coefficient times x to an exponent that's smaller by 1. All we have to do now is simplify a little bit, and we have the equation of the derivative function. Let's look at number 6. Number 6 says f of x equals 4.77 to the 23rd power, which, by the way, even though it's written in sort of a fancy way, just simply means that we're talking about a constant. 
And the constant that we're talking about here, we don't even care what it's equal to. But all we're trying to do is find the derivative. Now, because the notation is given as f of x, the best way to write the derivative is saying f prime of x, staying consistent with the notation that we were given in the first place. Since this is the derivative of a constant function, it's pretty straightforward. The derivative is simply 0. Let's try a different type of notation. In number 12, you're given this notation, d dx of, and then in parentheses you have the expression y to the 2, or x to the 2 fifths minus 4x squared minus 3x to the minus 1 plus 14. So this helps us out. We can use our derivative of a sum of functions, because really, this is simply the sum of four different functions, all of, three of which are a power function. The last one is a constant function. So if I'm going to write my derivative in this case, my d dx of y, or whatever I've got here, all I'm going to really do here is I'm going to put an equal sign. Okay? And I'm going to continue onward, because this is saying, take the derivative with respect to x of this expression. They didn't name that expression y, didn't name it x, or excuse me, didn't name it um, f of x, didn't name it anything. So we're just going to simply say this is like an operator, like a square root. Okay? So what am I going to do? Well, the first one, first term here is a power function, so I'm going to write 2 fifths x. And now I have to think about if I have 2 fifths and I subtract what would essentially be 5 fifths, I'll have negative 3 fifths as my exponent. Minus. I have a 4, which is going to get multiplied by the 2, which is an exponent. That's going to make an 8x. I could write 8x to the first power if you like, but essentially I'm just reducing the exponent by 1. Now I have to be careful. I have minus 3, and I'm going to take this negative 1 and make it a, co a coefficient in front of the uh, derivative term. So negative times a negative is going to make a positive 3 x, be careful here, if I reduce this by 1, I actually get x to the negative 2. It's really easy to screw that up. Then I have a constant function which has a derivative of 0, so I don't have to write that down, but this expression right here would be my derivative. And by setting it equal to the previous expression, I've shown that it is, in fact, the derivative. So let's try one more. What would happen if I give the derivative in this form. Let's look at uh, 14. So 14 says u equals negative 5x minus 7 squared. We're going to look at another way to do this a little bit later in the course, but for now we would say that we don't have a way to differentiate this because it's not written as a power function. It's written as a binomial that's being squared. So what we need to start with is actually squaring out the terms here. So we know we're going to have the first term squared, which is going to make 25x squared. We're also going to have a middle term that's going to consist of two uh, products of negative 7 and 5x. And when you combine those together, you're going to get negative 70x plus 49. Hence the reason we've been doing a lot of this in warm-ups frequently. If I take the derivative, think for a minute about the notation. I start with u, so the best way for me to write the derivative is as u prime. And now I have an expression up here that's a sum of power functions and a constant function, so I can use my sum of derivatives rule to write that as follows. And there's my solution. So once you do the expansion, it's pretty straightforward work. Uh, now would be a good time for you to try some of the odd numbered exercises in the same set and see if you can get the correct answers from the back of the book.